You're listening to a Weeby Geeks Network podcast. It's Pro Wrestling Cast. Shut up. My time has come, and that's the bottom line. With your hosts, Al John and Steven. I've been the best ever since day one when I walked into this company. It's Pro Wrestling Cast, a weekly look into the world of professional wrestling. I'm going to reach out right now. I want you at home to know my hand is touching your hand. Follow us on Facebook at Pro Wrestling Cast and on Twitter at P Wrestling Cast. I always try to do what's best for business. Have a question or just want to comment? Leave us a voicemail at 615-9339-PWC. That's 615-9339-792. Or how about a Y2J telling you to shut the hell up? And now, Pro Wrestling Cast. <laughs> oh yeah, pudding. Twenty-five thousand dollars worth of pudding. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome from the, uh broadcasting live, emanating from the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois. This is Pro Wrestling Cast, your weekly webcast for you wrestling marks out there, wrestling news and commentary. My name is Al John Go, lifelong wrestling fan and broadcaster, podcaster. Joined, as always, by the heel commentator. He's not a tweener, but he does have the glove of injustice. He is the heel, Stephen Anthony. How are you, sir? Sir, how are you doing tonight in your travels? I am doing well. We are here in Chicago. We've got C2E2 in full effect coming up this weekend. I have already gotten Stan Lee I'm in the line. Yes, that's right. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be meeting Mr. Stan Lee. It's going to be awesome. Uh-huh. I hope to at least catch a few seconds of him, but uh, I know that I'll be attending uh, some of his panels. Some really cool stuff with Marvel. We have a lot of wrestlers, by the way, attending C2E2. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, so while while I'm getting this rundown, let me remind everybody that Pro Wrestling Cast exists because you are supporting our show. You download it. You watch it on iTunes, or you listen to it on iTunes, you listen to it on Stitcher Radio and the We Be Geeks Podcast Network. So thank you for that. You're also watching our YouTube videos. It's one of the very few wrestling shows that actually has great wrestling info and insight that's on YouTube, where you can actually see the people that are talking. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, there are a lot of wrestling commentators out there, and we, are, in fact, are looking for a heel tweener baby face, wipe me baby face, I don't care who it is, female. If you're a wrestling women, woman and want to join us on a panel discussion and you are a mark, all right, and I'm talking smart mark, I'm not talking mark mark, all right, so if you're going to mark out and you're going to be all about John Cena up in here, which we love John Cena, but if you're going to talk all about John Cena and how awesome he is, you are not part of this show. <laughs> okay. wrong um, mark, mark. Wrong mark, wrong mark. Now look, we love John Cena, all right, but once Sometimes. again, yeah <laughs> like my wife she loves john cena but guess what she also loves the hardys and Rey mysterio and rob van dam you know so baby guess faces, what? Right. yeah Chris, Kristen loves baby faces uh but she also she also likes the occasional heel she does like chris jericho when she's heel when he's heelish yeah. so uh that's not that's not too shabby you know that's but true. Kristen is definitely she she likes to cheer for the faces now your wife she contributed something really cool to the show in the form of our promo of the week, right? Yes. Well, yeah, I, I, we were like, well, what should we do for promo of the week? And, and she pointed out that, um, well, how did you put it, Terry? <laughs> she said the Harley race promo in front of the briefcase, which oh, the money. Uh, I mean, that's, um, that's the best way to put it. He's front of the briefcase and he goes, and then she also does a pretty good imitation of his voice and said, $25,000. Um, <laughs> I want the real Ric Flair. <laughs> right. It's, it's a great promo. He, um, there's really no better than him as, as far as heel champions go. I, I, don't, I can't think of one better. Maybe Bach Winkle. Um, yeah. <laughs> you could say Flair, although he got cheered a lot. We're talking about a straight up. Heel. No one likes you. Yeah, let's heal heat like hatred heat. And can beat you up in in real life, and you know it. You know, so he was a real heel, shadow of doubt, 
like because like well maybe he really i mean his matches look spectacular mm -hmm. always believable filled with wonderful old school spots amateur looking spots new school stuff running the ropes top rope stuff stiff knees and just a lot of rick flair's repertoire comes from him you can tell later on and they had a tremendous feud one of the best i've ever seen and incidentally uh triple h borrowed the idea i think in 2003 for this promo when he was feuding with kevin nash and he did the he actually did the promo note for note had a briefcase offered anyone money to jump kevin nash and he even had the same really cool um, I don't even know how what you would call it, like the sideburns Cyber connect chops. to the yeah. sideburns connect to the mustache connects to the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> but that was all Harley. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. Well, no, Triple H really did uh, idolize people like Harley Race for sure, and uh, and by the way, Harley Race, a um, a part time chiropractor for the boys in the back. If you had a back problem, if you had issues. He was liable to stretch you and uh, try to put it back into place. More oh, times yeah. than not, my understanding is that he would hurt guys more than he would help them. But. <laughs> right, right, right. And um, he also um, erased a lot of the skin pigment from Ricky Steamboat's face for almost a whole year, uh, doing a pretty perverse angle where they were rubbing. Flair would rub Steamboat's face in the concrete. They did this in the Carolinas. I think it was 78. And um, his face was just in bad shape. He rubbed it with sandpaper. He tried to punch him to bust it open. He rubbed it with sandpaper. He cut it. He did all this stuff to give him a scar. Well, it stayed for about a year. Mm -hmm. And um, Harley Ray. It, but the angle got over and Steamboat um, got huge in Carolina from all that. Right. And Har Harley's just back there to help people. He really <laughs> is. I'll inflict, I'll, I'll inflict pain to put you over. He'll put you over, kid. All right. Yeah, <laughs> and he can do a hard way uh, uh, punch really good where you bust over the um, right, yeah. right over, over the, the top the of the eye. eyeball. Yeah, me a little, He's one of the last little. guys that did it really proficiently from what I understand. Um, anyway, one of my favorites, no doubt, Harley Race, no doubt. the man. Yes. A true wrestling heel, the heel of heels. A real heel. And he's putting out a hit on Ric Flair, so we're going to hear that. That is going to be our promo <laughs> of the week as well as our match of the week as well. Uh, definitely check out the show notes for all of that. A uh, little housekeeping before we go into Extreme Rules and Monday Night Raw review with our heel commentator. Uh, you can help support the show, as always, by making sure you click on our links through our website at ProWrestlingCast.com. We have got our Amazon links. So important for you to click on that. It doesn't cost you any more. All you have to do is click the link, start your shopping, and a little bit of the fundage that you put into that product, Amazon kicks back to help us in the show. We'd yep. also like to thank our good friends at High Spots. Yes, that's right, highspots.com. You can click our banner, and that banner, once again, will help us out. If you need wrestling videos, they have a sale going on right now, thousands of videos on demand as well as you know actual physical uh, dvds yes they still make those so you can <laughs> have your library of shoot interviews and great interviews as stephen anthony said last week as we uh, introduced high spots that rick flair interview amazing stuff they amazing. also have got ring uh rings they've got replica belts they've got stuff if you're a wrestler or an independent wrestler they've got masks they've got boots they've got gear for you so do yourself a favor hit up our website at prowrestlingcast.com and click on our links to high spots and you will be supporting the show this week in wrestling news yeah. now without any further ado it is the wrestling news let's briefly go over some of that news in our raw report our heel commentator stephen anthony how was raw in your oh eyes? it was it was one of the best tv shows i've ever watched <laughs> um of course you know, now that I write a blog for the Raw Report, which, you know, came from me taking notes while I watched the show, I did find that this week it was a little it was pretty hard to write an entertaining blog about Raw because it was it was just kind of boring. Um 
I thought they did a spectacular job with Randy, though. Randy Orton was um, basically did a homage to the old Steve Austin. Do you remember that episode of Raw? I do. Stunners for everyone. It was around the Royal Rumble. I think the Rumble was the next Sunday coming up in 1998, so it would have been January, and he just kept stunning everybody after their matches. And I remember it being just fantastic. That's when wrestling was hot, you know. Yeah. Sting was feuding with Hogan over the belt at the time. Uh, the NWO was strong. Michaels had the title as heel champion. And Austin was about to win the Royal Rumble. I think Undertaker was about to be murdered by his brother. Uh, everything was happening. ECW was actually doing pretty good for itself with right. Shane Douglas as champion. It was a great time. Well, anyway, <laughs> Raw reminded me a lot of that with Randy. Uh, as I said, he RKO'd. Um, who did he RKO? He RKO'd. Um, oh, he RKO'd three man band. Three man Mr. band. You know, and, I mean, salad. I believe was that salad. You know, uh, into some nachos, I think. Okay, <laughs> it's interesting because it, you know he, Heath Slater was there in catering, talking, and then all of a sudden he turns around and bam, RKO out of nowhere, laying on the table. All right. kinds of stuff, and then Randy picks up a tortilla chip and chops on it. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I mean, delicious. awesome, delicious. I love this that. Is, um, this is the most over he's been. Um, I was, you know, when when we did our first initial podcast when he came out in Nashville, um, you know, he was super over, and you you expect a baby faces heat to die out as he comes out each week, but he's actually gotten better and better. He's a great promo, by the way. I thought I thought his promo in the cage, yes, as you said, it is a you know tweener baby face you know move. But I thought his mic work was great. Um, I think he, I think he continues to improve, and the RKO's out of nowhere. I mean, let's face it, we talked about in the very first episode of Pro Wrestling Cast about the wrestling memes and about all those uh, the twitters and all the all the the footage of him just RKOing people out of nowhere finally is, is getting over. And I, I was hoping that it would be sooner than later because his character yeah. is so over with the internet. I mean, you can see those, uh, those Twitter memes and those gifts moving back and forth about him just RKO out of nowhere. And I even referenced that in my other podcast and people understood where I was talking about. I mean, it's, it's really cool. It's over. And, um, you know, he, um, he was standing tall at the end of the show, and we can go over what that means. When we review the Extreme Rules card, we can – I think I know what that probably means. Um, I thought Kane cut the best promo of his life. Oh, my I mean, God. I didn't believe Promo gold. It. <laughs> promo gold. I mean, you know, people whine, bitch, moan, complain, you know, and we do here on the show about, about Big Show and – how he's being booked and how his character doesn't make any sense anymore and, mm -hmm. and how it's kind of a tired act, you know, and he, it's just, he's wishy-washy. I don't think there's a single character that has moved back and forth from baby to, to heal as yeah. much as big show. Wow. However, Kane, as much as he's moved back and forth over the course of God knows how many years, what 17 years he's been doing this on WWE TV. A he lot. He debuted in 95 as Isaac Yankum. Yeah. So that's 20 years straight. 20 years. My God, man. No break. You know, no break. And break. his character, and I was really worried for his character, and he comes out like a ball of fire, cuts an awesome promo about how Seth Rollins wouldn't be in his position if it wasn't for him. And God, man, it was good. That was that was a highlight of the show, seeing him talk like that with that fire, you know? Yeah. You know, I think it's all leading to a swerve uh, on all of us. And I think it's obvious. But what's sad is, to me, they could turn him babyface, put him in the mask and feud him with Rollins for about a month and it would be pretty good. Um, but that's probably not where they're going. But, you know, who, who am I to say that's how good that promo was? Do you think that uh, it might be gearing up toward a retirement match of some kind? Do you think Kane might? Is, is, you think? I mean, for me, it no. looks like Kane still has some more gas in the tank. I, I feel like he's fine. He um, he wrestles rests rests <laughs> he wrestles sort of a limited style, and he always has. He hasn't exactly taken the most bumps in the world. He doesn't have a history of a lot of injuries. No, very very dependable. 
Yeah, he's a big old dude. He's very responsible. He's obviously not a drug taker. You can kind of tell, mm-hmm. or heavy partier. I I could see him wrestling another five years, for better or worse. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, well, he's from Sevierville, so he's that right there <laughs> makes me like him. I love Sevierville. Uh, so. He is he is a Tennessean, and God love the, uh, Isaac Yankum. <laughs> yeah, Yankum I mean plus Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, um, Isaac Yankum. I, I thought was hilarious. I thought that was a funny character. I thought his outfit didn't look good. I mean, the idea of an evil dentist sounded good, but it, they did it in a childish way. If you think about it, it could have been pretty. He was very bad back then, too, to be quite honest. Um, he was actually bad when he was first Kane. He wasn't really very good at working until... I remember he had a decent match with Austin in mid-98, and Austin finally, like, he kept working with Undertaker, and that seemed to help him out. You know, you have to get get that level of practice in to get get good. And um, he's he's a solid hand. He's not um, Ricky Morton or or, or Ricky Steamboat, but, um, you know, everybody has their place in the card. It's not a, you know... It's not a smart mark thing, really. It's it's about the carnival, the the different elements of the show, and yeah, he's, he's cast. Young. He's cast well, very um, well. He's cast very well. He knows his role. He is a roadblock for the baby faces. He is, you know, he is he is not the high level boss, but he is one that is always formidable. You know, you look at people like him and Mark Henry; they're always roadblocks. No matter if they're baby faces or heels, they're they are the roadblock characters. They are always that one one step that the face must overcome before getting to the meat and potatoes. So, you know, and that's, and that's a great place for him to be because he is credible and he still wins matches. And if he continues to cut promos like this, he'll continue to be, he might even be getting more cheers, you know, um, they yeah. could go that way if they wanted to. And uh, they had before, I mean, it was only two years ago where Daniel Bryan and him were tag team champs and they were working a great program. I mean, the hilarious. guy can do comedy. The guy can do comedy. He the was so, he was so funny with the uh, therapist mm-hmm. sitting down and getting very calm and talking like libertarian Kane because he is a political figure, believe it or not. And in, in Tennessee, I mean, I I know that shocks people that don't know that, but he's a libertarian and uh, he you know he he does dress in a suit usually. That's usually how he looks. Um, and uh, he had an interesting angle. I don't know if you want to talk about the SmackDown tapings later, but he did an interesting angle with Rollins at that too. Okay. Well, let's just go ahead and continue to run down before we, you know, sure. go into a rabbit hole. Let's just run down. Uh, <laughs> let's just run down Raw real the quick. The dark so. Stephen rabbit hole of healdom um, yeah. <laughs> that I always tangent into. Yeah, I don't think I use that word right. Um, <laughs> Lucha Dragons, um, they swerved me and. Um, you know, I thought they were having a pretty good match with the New Day. I will admit I'm starting to like the New Day uh, more. Um, I think I think their heat is re- reverse heat. I think it was like, we don't like you heat, not like we want to boo you heat. But I don't think they like the gimmick. What is the gimmick? That they're, they're bad at their gimmick? That's- well, I mean, it's just a bad gimmick, whatever it is. It was just bad packaging. They come out with this contrived, you know, this contrived um, um, church choir song. They have this crazy clap that no one cares about, which Big E can obviously clap in rhythm. You know, he dances like Carlton, and I think he's a geek. He needs to be that guy. They all need to be just geeky guys from Lambda, 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 you know. And they come out you know, looking all positive and everything. And I think everybody just wants to, to give them a chance. They're really good hands, but they haven't, they, they've gotten this really horrible gimmick. And uh, I don't think the colors work. I don't think the music works. I don't think the entrance works. And they're already getting booed out of the ring before they even set foot on the, the mat. They just, you know. So the writing staff is like, hey, they're big heels. They're over his heels. You see what I mean? It's not, they're not over his heels because, Dick Slater and Orton jumped Ric Flair for twenty five thousand dollars, not to give away the angle from eighty three, <laughs> but um, but that's who cashed it in. But they're not over like that. They're over. They're not over. They're like hated. Like we don't. We think you're bad at your job. 
heat. So I don't, you know, yeah, whatever. I think that's what it is. I think people actually want to cheer them, but they hate the gimmick. I mean, I, I, I feel that they don't I feel that way about them actually. That you don't like them at all. No, I feel that way that I want to cheer them because, in despite their silly gimmick, and I just go along with it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I heard. Tyson and Cesaro got some really great reactions overseas and they were jobbing them a bit the last couple of Raws and they've put a halt that, you know, we, maybe they've put a halt to that. We'll say that in the review, but mm. I don't know. I was surprised the Lucha Dragons lost. Callisto remains my new favorite guy on the show. Mm. Uh, the new Rey Mysterio um, booking it as a count out win doesn't show much faith in, in new day at all. So I, I don't know what that was supposed to be. Yeah, I think they're still um, trying to find their way uh, and what's going on with the tag division. It just seems really odd. Boy, somebody in the backstage sure doesn't like NXT, and I think I know who it is. I don't want to be the first person to say it on the yeah, internet, but I'm just going to be I'm going to be the first person to say this. I don't think Vince McMahon likes NXT wrestlers. Mm -mm. Nope. Don't you get that sense? Sense? Oh yeah. Yeah. I think he's like well, I, I believe promotion, bro. I I no, I I believe he's trying to haze him. He's a hazer. I'll tell He's a you. Hazer. <laughs> I mean, you know, we know that Vince McMahon wants to put people through the ringer and put him through tests. I mean, he always talks about grabbing the brass ring. What people forget is that he puts hoops in front of people to see if they'll jump through them. Yeah. Can you? Can you suffer through, yeah. Can you suffer through diversity? Will you suffer through this really shitty gimmick? Will yeah. you? Will you suffer through jobbing um, after you have this really great thing? I mean, look at damn Fandango for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? You mean the I baby mean, face Fandango who dances <laughs> for all of his fans? Yeah. How is that going to get over? I what? don't know. That's I don't dumb. know. It's really it's bizarre. It's bizarre. But you know, and look at the whole. I mean, case in point. Look at Cesaro. Cesaro had an amazing NXT career. Moving into the WWE, everybody had sights on him. You had all the podcasts talking about him, how he was a future, and then he goes on the Stone Cold's podcast. Yeah, and he says. I don't know why he's not getting over. Maybe it's because he's Swiss. What? <laughs> that was the most heelish thing I've ever heard someone say. It's hey, like, look. hey, look. Let me let me tell what I've never heard this until I started doing this. The IWC is what we call this. The Internet, Internet, Wrestling, Internet Community. Wrestling Community. Okay, let me let me uh, <laughs> give a let me give an announcement to the IWC. You ready, everybody? If you put somebody over on your podcast or your blog or your YouTube channel or your comments on the torch or e-wrestling news, if you put them over and make them internet over, they will not push them. That's what's happening. They don't like the IWC. They like WWE. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. put them over, they're done. <laughs> look at, look at the track record. It's unreal. Yeah. You know what it is? It's um, Shawn Michaels said something interesting on JR's podcast about how if so many people are complaining, how many? Why do people continue to watch? Because they're marks. Because they're marks. <laughs> Absolutely. It's because we're marks. It's because no matter what, we will still watch. Um, and it doesn't take into consideration casual wrestling fans or people that just enjoy it for the enjoyment of it instead yeah. of listening to those podcasts and granted ours is one of them um but you know i tend to enjoy that that kind of stuff you know um sean michaels had said <laughs> you know if if the show sucked that bad then why do you still watch right why do you still watch every and people week. still freaking watch every week you're a mark i watch i enjoy it but i'm not sitting here of course i have my opinions um, and for the longest time, I, you know, Stephen and I, we, we just talked about it as friends, you know, I, we were just talking about it. Now we, we are voicing our opinions, but I mean, honestly, we continue to watch, you know, I'm not sitting there complaining about someone's lack of being pushed really. I mean, you know, I, I'm rolling along with it because I enjoy the entertainment aspect. I, I like the physicality, but, um, <laughs> sure. I, I simply watch the show and compare it to other uh, wrestling shows I've watched before, but I mean, I like to watch the show now more than I have uh, in the last few years. I, I like all the new wrestlers they have. I simply see something like, oh, we're having a cage match, 
and I compare it to other ways cage matches were booked. That's yeah. honestly what I do. And I watch the show like that, but I also take in consideration the the other aspects of TV and uh, production and writing, you sure. know, just like you do, because. You know, I love Walking Dead, and I like you know really good TV shows. And this is the golden age of TV, after all. So I look at that that aspect, and I'm like, are these characters being cast and utilized the proper way? Yeah. What is their place in the in the program? And right now, in terms of the tag division, I don't think they've figured out who's over. the 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 management and the writer team doesn't doesn't know who to, who to put over, and. Well. And the, that's because they, they, they booked it really shallow. When you put all your eggs in the basket of the Usos and the Usos are now out of the picture, you, uh, who's your damn backup, guys? Who's your backup tag team? You don't know. Yeah. It reminds me It reminds me of 95 and 96 when they pushed the smoking guns and they really didn't have any other ideas. No, they had no. They were like, well, that's good enough. And, um, you know, whatever. Lucha Dragons didn't really come out to a big pop, but they get the crowd as they go. I'll tell you who is over is Seamus. Um, I'm, I'm <laughs> starting to really enjoy his character. Um, I have hated his character for years. It's this baby face Irish, a nice Irish guy. Like, I don't care about that. And, you know, he was cutting a promo as he kicked Zack Ryder in the face. And he was very matter of fact about it and blase. And it was really very funny. I, I was. I was charmed by it quite a bit. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I think probably if um, if worse comes to worse, maybe Seamus could. Um, it's so funny not having the second title, by the way. It's kind of funny. It, it struck me. I always hated having a SmackDown title. And now that now that it's gone, it's like, well, gee, Seamus, heel Seamus would be a great SmackDown champion. You I know? know, right? This would be the time for him to just squash everybody every week. Which he already is doing. Well, I think they're heating Sheamus up for an eventual run at John Cena's U.S. title. Yeah, I can see that, or or the uh, Intercontinental title, either one. Well, right now, you know, who knows what's going on with the IC belt? But well, I think I know. But you know, I think I think John Cena is going to go through every ethnicity for the U.S. title. Yes, he's a a real I mean, American, is he? All right, he is a real American. Every ethnic group that becomes but, before. That's right. I mean, before you know it, they'll 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 bring uh, Hideo Tommy in there, and then <laughs> Hideo Tommy will be representing Japan versus the United States. The minute Hideo Tommy comes down the ramp for that match, I'm going to go, "Oh boy, here we go! <laughs> here, comes, here comes this big job." I'm, I, oh dear lord, I, I'm not even going to go there. But anyway, if, if people would have just seen him in pro wrestling Noah, they would understand that this guy is an absolute monster. Mm. baby face <laughs> he was incredible <laughs> but you know whatever that's why i get upset with that see i don't care about a new guy like neville like like he's incredible but he has a cape and i'm like okay but i i have a backstory on him or like i have with ultimo dragon i was very almost despondent uh when ultimo dragon like slipped at wrestlemania and he he wasn't doing well and <laughs> it was just like, mm -hmm. no, it's Ultimo Dragon. This is Ultimo Dragon. This can't happen, you know, because yeah. I'd already fallen in love with it, uh, with the character and his his great moves. But anyway, Seamus, yeah, he's over. <laughs> I'll give it to him. <laughs> it took me a couple of weeks, and the hair's his hair sucked before, like really bad. You know, that was bad, and it, it's hard when you're a redhead to have hair. I happen to have beautiful hair. So uh, it's easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's cool, man. I uh, well, looking looking at the rest of your your heel raw report, um, you did mention my uh, hate report. <laughs> your hate report. Uh, we did talk uh, quickly about Fandango squashing Curtis Axel. Oh, that was wonderful. Um, good times there. Uh, Curtis Axel to me is still the man. I don't care what anybody says. I love Axel a little bit. Axelmania does run wild with me. Um, I like Axel, sure. So the Divas came out to an, actually a two-segment match, as Booker T would say, part one and part two. Part one so and part two of a two-segment two match. A two match. Thanks, Booker T. Um, that's a callback from a couple weeks ago. Yeah, this is definitely fake. Thanks, Booker T. Thanks, Booker. Uh, Naomi, of course, is really high on Booker T's Fave 5. Um, 
as you know, uh, Booker T cannot talk more about Naomi because Naomi is the most as athletic or athletic. Did I say that right? Uh, <laughs> diva on the roster, according to Booker T. Booker T is sure. high on Naomi, of course, and Na Naomi is hot. Uh, I, I don't, I don't blame him. But uh, Brie Bella, a nine-minute-long match, as you say. How about that? Them apples, not bad. Nine thirty-six, if I'm not mistaken. Not bad and pretty stiff. It wasn't a bad match, but I'm sitting there like, this is the match that gets ten minutes. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, I guess what annoyed me was like, I was like, well, when did the Bellas turn face? I didn't see. Uh, I don't. I don't get it. Like, and where's Paige at? And what? What the hell's going on? And yeah, I think, well, they wrote Paige out. You know, they wrote her right. out. I don't know. They wrote her out to to try something new, the change okay. in direction, and then. In terms of the old school insert promo, which I really dug, you know, the, the little box promo, I still think that she, even though she might he say heelish things, I honestly think that she's still a face. I, 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 I yeah. feel that I still, she's still a face versus the Bellas because until I see a, a, a face turn for the Bellas, they're still heels to me. They, but she was sitting there like worried, and that's not how a, a heel Bella acts. You know? I know it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. The Bellas it's... are faces to the writers, and Naomi's the heel. That's what they. That's their perception. Yeah, they haven't driven the point home very well. Not a not, not at all. I mean, I wrote like I read the Wrestling Observer. I do a wrestling podcast and write a, a wrestling blog, and I I didn't know that the Bellas had turned face. Wouldn't, wouldn't I know that? I mean, come on. There was no indication of any type of face turn or swerve or anything. No, but, nothing. Uh, it just but, sort of happened one day. You know, just because just because a talent like Naomi, who has been traditionally a face, she's never been a heel. Mm -hmm. She comes in and she voices her frustration, doesn't and and beats people up as a badass, does not make her a heel. Sorry, writers. Think again. Right. You know, make sure that when you tell a story, there is clear storytelling, that you have a middle or a start of a middle and an end. I mean, it's just lazy to me. Yeah, it's they, a little lazy. The laziness of the writers was the point of my blog. I I, I came across a lot more sarcastic than uh, when I talk on this because I'm trying to write creatively. But really, the frustration that comes out when I do that is is the writing. It's really not the performers. No one is letting me down on my TV set. When I say Seth Rollins, the cowardly heel, and he runs away, and he's to the belts too big for him. Well, that's their fault. Give him, give Seth Rollins a proper sized belt. It almost makes it feel like he's just holding on to that for Lesnar to get it back or Reigns to get, like that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. That's their fault. That's laziness. They haven't come up with any, barely any new ideas since WrestleMania ended. If you really think about it, no, they they really haven't, and that's a shame. You know. Um, they haven't booked it properly. They're in this kind of limbo. And, They've continued feuds. Well, and once again, I think it's bad because WrestleMania should be the, you know, it should be the blow off. It should be, this is the end. And then we're going to shuffle the right. deck and have new stuff. And they didn't do it because here we are once again, stupid John Cena versus Rusev at Extreme Rules. Rollins versus, versus Orton again. Rollins versus Orton once again. I mean, what okay. the hell, dude? And if Naomi yeah. hadn't, if AJ hadn't quit, she'd be in Naomi's spot, AJ versus Brie Bella still. Mm -hmm. C Cesaro and Kidd are fighting New Day. That sounds, I think I've, I swear I've seen that too. And there's an intercontinental bunch of guys fighting over and it's, and Ambrose is fighting Harper and like, that's yeah. lazy. Like what? That was another segment. I was like, what, what What exactly is this? It looked like they were going to – these guys have had intense brawls before. And, um, you know, they well, – okay, that's my point. Why does that get two minutes and there's no finish and it's a nothing match and then they get ten? I'm just saying, mm -hmm. you know, but – It's really weird. But, I uh, mean, a decent a decent women's match, okay, <clears> so be yeah, it. fine. Weird, weird booking, but still decent match. They work great. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you have Sheamus versus Zack Ryder, okay, <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and 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 then a, a ball is dropped. Stephanie's going to be on Y two J live. Exciting, exciting. Like I was saying, we will see where they're going to go with Y two J's podcast from this. This will be very telling. You know, he had an easy one with Cena, but let's see what kind of questions 
he asks her, and again, um, and they have a really cool history if you think about when they did their they really do they work or whatever and the two of them work really well together. They're Y2K. very funny. And, I almost uh, like a sexual chemistry between them that was kind of I, interesting. I really do. I, I felt you know when you look back at those promos, maybe that should have been a, a really good promo, but. Um, Y2J cutting on Stephanie was great, and then even throwing Triple H in it, and the fact that the two of them didn't get along for a, for a while, like legitimately didn't get along, and have since then supposedly mend fences over heavy metal. I mean, that's cool. Well, yeah. metal heals all. Trust me. Yeah. Well, there you go. And Triple H likes Motorhead, and so does Y2J. So go figure, right? Well. You know, I'm a Halloween fan, like Jericho, and like, you know, I'm just saying that because, like, the fact that he likes Halloween and helped him name use his came up with his name with the Halloween album Walls of Jericho, which is a a really silly Halloween album and is rare that bonds some kinship, you know, is with with Jericho and me. Like, I'm like, wow, you really into that album? Well, yeah, that is a cool album. That was three Halloween singers ago, by the way. <laughs> and, um, you know, heavy metal does bond people. I just wanted to say that. Well, it bonded us, so that, that's good stuff. Well, well, I guess. Yeah, I mean, Man of War had, you know. Oh, yeah, they're tremendous. So, <laughs> you know, here we are with Cena versus Kane in a U.S. title match. And uh, interesting, okay. interesting I mean, stuff. Cena's been on a run lately. He's been on a roll, I should say. Um, He's had a string of good matches. Obviously, he's had a string of good pay-per-view matches with Rusev. He had a very good match with Ambrose a couple of weeks ago. And then he had a match last week with, um, I'm drawing a blank here, uh, Barrett. Yeah. Um, that was really good in England. So he's had like four or five straight really good matches. So I guess I was a little let down. But yeah, Cena continues to be one of the better parts in the show. Uh, I, what did you think of the uh, the the chain to the nose spot? Well, as you know, as the Miz was getting interviewed to promote the Marine, all of a sudden it cuts back to uh, Cena getting attacked by the Russian chain of destruction, the nose destruction. Yeah, it looked and, cool. Uh, man. It did look. It looked cool. I can see the memes now. You know, um, I'm gonna make you humble, Cena. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. basically, and. Uh, it did look really good. I mean, he sold it well, you know, uh, the camera backs away, you know, uh, Rusev still has a Walmart chain and John Cena. <laughs> is, it was a know, Walmart chain. Yeah. It's of course it's a Walmart it's chain. It's not a Russian chain. A Russian ah, chain would bust a, you up. Yeah. It's a Walmart chain. And apparently it's going to be, you know, basically their quote unquote Indian strap match rules. Okay. So yeah, that's, I understand now it's not an, I mean, if they had a, a chain match, like, Great dog Valentine. collar chain match, huh? Like a dog collar chain match, right? Because like on the same pay per view that Flair and Race fought from that promo, we're going to talk about or play later. They had mm -hmm. Valentine, Greg Valentine against Roddy Piper, and it's the most it's, it's unreal. It's one of the bloodiest matches I have seen, and the Piper's legit collar, nuts for that. Yeah. One. Well, the dog collar chain match. I mean, I think Piper still can't hear. And out of that ear because of it being what it was almost ripped off right it was pretty bad and he lost hearing in it here's like here's a really funny part of the thing okay Amazing match though piper piper they they did those matches in a run in the carolinas territory after or the pay-per-view so they had to keep doing the match so piper decides it would be nice to get some nice soft sort of cushiony thing to wear around there the dog collar like i forget the fabric it was well, it's kind of like a like a like a you know like a bomber jacket material like a lamb right, wool exactly. or something like that yeah so it's this wool that's itchy so he says he gets in there and valentine's like ah oh, this thing itches and he's like <laughs> getting angry at him and hitting him with the chain he's like i wanted it to feel comfortable for us and he's like we're in a chain match what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny if you think about it. No, I'll put a nice, comfortable dog collar on. What are you talking about? I'm going to hit you in the face <laughs> with the chain. I'm worried about our comfort level for it. And he's like, yeah, I guess you're right. It's so funny, dude. Yeah. It's a, but once again, it, it is a classic match. Yeah. Um, uh, really quick, I have to say, what is up with the Miz and Miz Dow? 
hey, they blew that. Blew it. Blue, blue, blue. I don't know what the f- – what was that supposed to have ever been? From my understanding. We, month ago. we said they didn't know how to end it. They sure didn't. They ended it dumb. Okay. And he pins him and watch the Marine Fort. I don't yeah. know. Here's a here's a rake, or you know, here's a rake from Summer Ray to Damien Sandow. Damien Sandow uh, gets screwed. Miz, you know, pulls a one, two, three. Um, whoopee, whoop de doo. And guess what? Miz is gonna film another movie here in a few days. So what's the point? What's the? Point? <laughs> I don't know. Just an it actor is, now at this point. It's such a strange thing. He films like literally two to three movies every year for WWE yeah. and. It's and it's fine. I don't have a problem with that, you know. And people ask, you know, because I, I I love the Miz. I think he's a great heel. Um, do I think he deserved his spot at WrestleMania a few years back as world champion? Probably not. Um, I think it should have gone to CM Punk, but nonetheless, I think they played the role. He played the role. Um, and 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 right now he's he's just enjoying acting for WWE. I mean, he is a you know, he is a WWE guy yeah. and I think he's a great heel, but I mean, give the guy the proper, the proper writing, the script and everything. I mean, hell, if, if Miz is going to be, you know, doing the Hollywood thing, you know, have Sando take him out in the ring, have him count out and then write him off the show because Sandow beats the crap out of him. Right. Make Sandow look good. So when Miz comes back, they have something else to, to fight about. I guess you know. they weren't. I guess they never expected Sandow to get over. I guess they don't want Sandow to be over, and um, you and know, they makes not, no not sense have to me. It, but they had a whole freaking year to figure it out. For Christ's sake, lazy, lazy, lazy writing, the worst. Yeah, and what they have twenty people writing for that damn show. I mean, and the revolving man. door of them that they get rid of yearly to get new people in, and they're usually LA writers that just write and. I don't know. I mean, I understand they're not wrestling people, but they should definitely come up with some ideas. Mm. I don't know. Maybe there's too many cooks in the kitchen. That might be the uh, problem. Yeah. Too many cooks, spoil the broth, you know? Um, so to speak. How about Ry- Ry- I love that show, by the way. Um, Ryback squashes Adam Rose. Okay, so you refuse to re- you review it on your heel. No, commentary. I will not review it now either. I will not review but, it. But I will say this. <laughs> what did the hot dog say to the banana? <laughs> Nothing, because you got shell shocked. <laughs> I mean, that I did is... think it was fun. Okay, I'll make one comment. I did think it was funny when Ryback was staring at a banana. Yeah, it was funny. I think, okay, that's pretty funny. Yeah, you know, banana hot dog. I mean, feed me more. I mean, yeah, all they needed to put in there was a lemon. You know, it's just I so mean, lazy. Look... Finish it. Like, wh- where did they come up with that one? I don't know. I don't know. I. I like I like the old Ry Baxter, you know. I mean, he's fine. Well, I once just, he once he once he jobbed to CM Punk, it was never the same, and he never came back from it. So yeah, whatever. Yeah. Rollins over Dolph. Dolph the jobber. <laughs> he's a jobber to the stars, man. It. Yeah. He'll I never. Hate. They. He will never be any more than he is, and people just have to understand that. They have to understand that his title run was was meant nothing to them because SmackDown. At least at that time, did meant nothing to him. It probably will mean more to them when it moves to USA um, in a few months or next year, whenever it will. But um, I forgot exactly when. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't think Ziggler's anybody they um, want to do anything with. And quite frankly, the way he's been pushed and the amount of matches I've seen on TV with him and the amount of time I've seen him on my TV, I don't really care to see him as much as I, I really just don't because he's always on TV. I, I'm and not he's always jobbing. And I'm not going to have any faith in him. You know, we want to act like we're smart marks, but the fact of the matter is when Brock Lesnar didn't job at WrestleMania, I was happy because I like Lesnar and I want – I am a mark. I want him to win. Yeah, we want to cheer for these talents. We we like right. – we believe in their characters. I believe in Lesnar. It, it breaks it breaks my heart when the, you see talents that, that work really hard at the job and the, the, the storyline they, they've been given – and they have gotten, you know, and yes, I'm a mark, yeah, you know, and it sucks that uh, you don't see that that uh, potential uh, being realized in any type type of way. You want people that work hard, that put, that leave it all in the ring to be rewarded in some way, and you know, it sucks when that doesn't happen. Well, 
Uh, I mean, for Ziggler, um, he it would have happened for him by now, and um, I just I just think he'll just stay where he's at, and I think they see Neville, and probably will see Finn Balor. I hope they don't as another Ziggler, and uh, it kind of hit me when he jobbed to Rollins. I kind of had a I was like, uh oh, and then when he jobbed the following week, I'm like, okay, he's just just another Ziggler. Mm -hmm. Just another Ziggler. Yep. Well, you know, that not a is, bad match, by the way. But um, well, once again, that's their role. Just like Kane, Big Show, Mark Henry, you have those 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 roadblocks. You know, those those other heels need to be made strong by good workers. Right. And those heels are made stronger by facing someone of a likes of a Dolph Ziggler, or a Neville, or Daniel Bryan. You know. Which we'll get into momentarily. Who's that? Now, is he on the show? Uh, he wasn't on the show. Oh, is he not on the show? Conspicuous by his absence, Mr. Daniel Bryan. Uh, huh. Daniel Daniel Bryan, uh, as we alluded to earlier, has got some issues. So before we lay into just a couple things from SmackDown, we'll go into our Extreme Rules picks before okay. the pay per view this Sunday. Um, how did you want to attack this? Um, I I mean I I can tell you from the um. I can tell you from the tapings that, you know, he wasn't there. Um, he basically, you know, they, they, they started out with, um, they started out with the idea that um, Neville was going to, well, first of all, Neville pinned Barrett in the main event in a tag match. Of course he did. And like I said, SmackDown is the tag match show. The it's tag the match, match show. Um, apparent. I, I don't want to like go over every match. I'll just kind of because no, it's highlights it. is fine. But to me, the Neville, the Neville thing. Hold on, let me let me pull it up because I have it. I have it right here, and I want to I want to actually look at it while I'm. I don't want to say something wrong. Um. Oh shit. <laughs> well, we have Neville and Ziggler defeated Bad News Barrett and Sheamus in the tag match. Right. Right, that we're talking about. Uh, Naomi defeated Natalia versus Pinfall in four minutes. Oh, no, I said, oh, shit, because I thought I had lost my uh, connection to you on the internet. Oh, no, no, you're good. Yeah. Uh, Kofi <laughs> defeated Cesaro via Pinfall in four minutes. Yeah. Ambrose, versus, uh, Ambrose and Reigns took on Seth Rollins and Luke Har Harper. Uh, yeah, and Reigns, Reigns apparently got a good reaction again. So Reigns continues to have mostly good babyface reactions. Very good. And after the show, Sheamus and Barrett came out, followed by Dolph Ziggler and Neville. And I guess that was dark match action. But uh, was it the dark match? I thought that was the main event. Oh, was it? Uh, yeah, Sheamus and Barrett came out, followed by Ziggler and Neville. Eventually, by Big Show, they cleared no, no, no. the ring. Yeah, because they were going to have a single match, and they made it a double. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And Reigns' big show face off turned into a brawl with everyone involved. Show was kicked by Ziggler and Ambrose, and Neville followed up with his finisher off the top rope. So I guess yeah. it was a schmoz at the end. But, uh, you know, I mean, it looked like, you know, SmackDown looks to me like, you know, it was a decent show for what it was. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll definitely watch it, and I'm probably more interested to see Stephanie. But, um, you know, the, the biggest story there, um, I, I know they continued the Kane sort of kind of thing with uh, Rollins, and he, he asked him to come out and allow him to be pinned. And um, Rollins was going to do it, and then Kane said, hey, I'm just messing with you. I thought that led me to believe there more so that this is a swerve. And um, the absence of Daniel Bryan is the big story. If yeah. he was going to be on the pay-per-view, he would have been in the SmackDown taping. Who would have thought? Um, look at look at this. Match number three, Ryback defeated Rusev by DQ. Yusef Rusev, the Russian chain for DQ in 12 minutes. So it's still 12 minutes? Worth it. <laughs> yeah, 12 minutes. 12-minute 12 match. What are, you <laughs> what are you talking about, 12? Yeah. Maybe it'll be edited. Good God. I think so. I think so. Well, look, the 17 minute match was, you know, was the uh, the Roman Reigns Ambrose tag match. That was 17 minutes. Yeah, but I, that sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, 
Ryback versus Rusev, and they're still making Ryback look good. So that's a really interesting pick um, I, for them I, because they, they want to maintain Ryback's supremacy somehow. I think they did that match to make Ryback not look bad, but Rusev to look good and that he would attack someone with a chain at of the course. drop of a hat. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I They don't seem to really want to go anywhere with Ryback. They seem content on him having some, this heat he has and to keep it forever the way it is. But he, he just – he's treading water, but well, in a, in they're a keeping way. Well, I think they're keeping on a back burner just in case someone decides to get hurt. You know? <laughs> I believe you're right. I mean, like honestly, the backup first baseman. Well, they yeah, they. <laughs> I think you're. I think that's exactly what they're doing. They have to have some heat, uh, some guys on the on the back burner, just in case somebody gets hurt. So right now, your plucky face because of Daniel Bryan's injury, is it torn rotator cuff, something like that that you mentioned last time? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, but they, 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 it's like it's like the 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 presidents guarded the same way that they're guarding this injury. Yeah, like no one no one's reporting about it. As he said, it's a it's a really he, strange thing. I think that he hurt, okay. Look, if you listen back to our podcast, you'll you'll notice that we're usually pretty pretty good at predicting things. Okay, I will say that for us. I'll say that one thing, and here's my prediction. I think he's pretty hurt. I think he's really hurt. I think that he hurt his arm again in the nerve thing or whatever it is, the neck thing, the arm thing, whatever it all is. I think he hurt it about a month ago. I think he's been trying to work through it because he's the American Dragon and he's nuts. And I think now it's gotten to the point where that damn arm is back where it was again. And I have a bad, bad feeling that he's going to act be off a long time or have to have surgery or have to see several doctors and they don't know what the hell's going on. You know what I mean? But I think they're very nervous about it. And I think that, look, you don't put him on TV at all, but you don't say that he's not going to be at the pay-per-view. That's classic WWE BS. I've seen this before. He will not wrestle at the pay-per-view. There's absolutely, there's just no way he'll be there. I hope he's at the pay per view, by chance. But he would be on Raw or SmackDown just talking about anything. He he is just nowhere to be seen. They don't mention his damn name. Uh, and and to me, I think that they're hiding the fact that he's very hurt until after the pay per view. I really do. So let's move into the pay per view. Extreme okay. Rules this Sunday, WWE Network for just nine ninety nine. It's you sign up right now, but uh, have mercy, Mr. Daniel Bryan is supposed to face the Barrett Barrage, right? And Wade nope. Barrett, it's uh, it's not going to happen, I don't think. And how do they write him off? Does he actually fly into the pay per view and get attacked in the back and has to relinquish the title because of injury the next night on Raw? I think he doesn't show up at the pay per view at all. I think they're fearful that if he does go to the pay-per-view, the crowd will boo. The, the crowd's going to boo and want Brian anyway. But if he comes out there, they're really going to boo. And they're going to turn on that match no matter what. So what they have to do is put a baby face. This is booking 101. If your baby face can't show up for a title match, you put in a substitute baby face of equal or lesser value, just like when you return something to the store, <laughs> and that baby face always goes over. That's the old rule. That so, is the old rule. So will it be Neville? It might be nice surprise. You've certainly booked yourself into a corner by having him job twice now to do that. Yep. Um, I think that he's the logical person to be in this match. Um, you think? Because who else have been? Who else have that I mentioned earlier that they've been keeping out the back burner that still has momentum? Rybotch. Rybotch. Okay, Ry. I, 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 okay. Ah, you're clever, aren't you? Yep. Okay. Yeah. You, That's their backup plan. You're very clever. That's their backup plan because okay. I mean, you know, uh, feed me s'mores. 
that's what the, that's what's going to happen. He's going to have a lemon, a hot dog. He's going to have a run-in with a Subway sandwich. And then all of a sudden, he comes out as the brand new IC title holder. <clears throat> Don't you and, think the crowd would do-do all over that? Him coming out instead of Brian? Of course. They're going to do-do on anything that they do. They're, it's a no-win situation for them because of, of Daniel Bryan. But that's what happens when you don't explain what's going on. But they uh, might not the do Neville. They might. They actually might scrap the match altogether and not even have it on the pay per view. To be honest, what they're going to have a ninety-eight minute long women's match? What are you... <laughs> they already had. They already had one. <laughs> so, you well, know, I mean, they might. I mean, look, if if Brian is able to get to the pay per view and write it into the storyline as a, a heinous attack by somebody. Because, I mean, there's there's another factor that we haven't even talked about is a new face of evil, you know? Bray Wyatt. Um, we haven't even talked about Bray Wyatt. You know, Bray Wyatt is a new face of evil, could actually decimate Daniel Bryan before the pay-per-view or during the pay-per-view entry, uh, the, the outside of the pay-per-view, or even during the pre-show. And he would be a really cool guy that people would cheer for to have the IC belt. And that's another that's another that's another possibility for them. To me, Wyatt doesn't need a belt though. He um, doesn't. No. He's not but, a belt type of guy. He But he they need someone with a, but they need someone to fill the role. They also need someone that has the 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 charisma to be on screen to actually hold the viewers. They need they need people with that and someone with that kind of reaction with that kind of uh, uh you know response from the crowd would be formidable to take Brian's place because he's still a fan favorite, even though he's supposed to be a heel, you know? So we're saying Neville, I'm saying Neville, and you're going to say Ryback or possibly Wyatt. Yeah, because, who, who? I mean, right now, Wyatt is still in the mode of being cryptic. You know, who is he talking about? Is he, t is he trying to plan, uh, plant seeds for a Sting versus Wyatt match at SummerSlam? That's a possibility. Hey, that'd be a fun match. Yeah, I mean, it's a possibility. And what happens again was is right is, is you know who's going to job there? There needs to be something in between where someone someone wins something. Well, Barrett know? will job. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> well, no. What I'm saying is, if if Wyatt goes against Sting at SummerSlam, who's doing the job? Sting is going to job again. Is no, Wyatt, gonna, will Wyatt job. look Wyatt look like a piece of crap? You know, I mean, but that's not this pay per view. Um, right. There's several things we could talk about. So, but knows? but by the way, that's very cool. By the way, I never thought of Sting Wyatt. That's that yeah. sounds really intriguing. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Even a mania, even a mania, save it for that. Well, I hope they do figure out what to do with Sting's character because he's bipolar at best. You know, be the dark brooding Sting, who's the Avenger, who's the guy that that uh, is going to be the new face of the mystic uh, dark forces. You know anti-hero the batman of the wwe which he should be yeah but make sure that the music is better uh let's move on <laughs> and figure out what's going on so okay so we figured out you know kind of what's going on with brian ver brian versus uh, barrett uh let's move on to the kickoff show uh let's go with the tag belts we have cesaro kid versus new day uh Big E and kofi kingston um who is face and who's heel here? <laughs> Cesaro kid are the faces, and I, I think they'll I think they'll retain. Uh, it'd be a nice surprise to have New Day win the belts, and then maybe have them feud with uh, Lucha Dragons. Um, I think they have a little bit more faith in Cesaro and Kid now because of some good reactions they got on the road. They gauge yeah. a lot from the road. Um. They're good guys, but, man. They're good guys. But but New Day is the only thing that's been showcased on Raw, so that leads me to believe they'll take the belts. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. even though they're silly, but I think they think they have an over tag team. I, again, I think they're confused. Mm -hmm. Well, who's who knows what's going to happen? And, and I think. It, um, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say if you know, and, and I like Cesaro Kid too as being faces, but if they're going to have someone like the Lucha Dragons fight against somebody. Right. Because it's going to be New Day. So New Day is going to heal it over. You know, it's going to be a power slam and a boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. And all of a sudden, Tyson <clears throat> Kidd's going to be doing the job. He's going to get pinned. 
Back yeah. to the old job. job back, back, back to the old Jabron squad. So, <laughs> moving on from the Jabron squad, we have Jabron squad, the next generation. We have here our good friend Dolph Ziggler, who's the, yes. who's the who is the number one of the job squad versus yes. uh, Mister. I've got a mohawk and I'm not afraid to show it off, Mister. Tanner and a ghost. <laughs> I Shades. think. Uh, uh, and, my kiss, review, and hold on, it's a kiss me arse match. Oh, thank you for pointing that out. Yes. Um, I predict a disgusting, disgusting angle at the end where uh, <laughs> Seamus's buttocks is um, ugh, revealed and something awful happens. And he'll probably, if they could book it and make it happen to where Seamus literally kicked Dolph Ziggler's head into the crowd, they would actually book that at this point. That's how much they want Seamus over and Ziggler to job. So Seamus is going over. Let's yeah. just pray that we don't see. But I think that's what the you know it seems like a boring ish card. And if you put something like that into, but geez, wouldn't that? I mean, you have to have a payoff if you say that. But then doesn't that just kill Ziggler dead? It's bad. It's bad news. I, I'm afraid I have some really bad news. <laughs> I'm afraid that Dolph Ziggler is going to be kissing his arse just like the Blarney Stone. It's going to be very bad. <laughs> Barrett will go, I've got some super bad news for you. <laughs> Watch like him come in. Like, usual. He'll, he's going to have the exclamation point at the end of that. I'm afraid I have some bad news. <laughs> I mean, bad, bad news. Extremely bad. Um, two worlds collide. You've got the irresistible force versus the immovable object, as they say. Uh, thank you, Gorilla Monsoon. You've got Roman Reigns versus Big Show in a last man standing match. Oh boy! Um, right. I, I had. I had a, you I heard, heard a rumor. I heard, okay. I heard a rumor. Reigns goes over and feuds with Kane. Mm. 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 Can't get any worse than that. I right, let's be begging for the Big Show. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Sorry, show. Sorry, uh, show. I think they'll have a match where, um, you know, Big Show takes a lot of it. And um, I, I, I'm sure Reigns will surprise us once again. And um, yeah, I'm sure. Well, know. also, you know, let's let's put it like this. I mean, Reigns is going to be put in the ring with people that know more than him. And Big Show can make him look like a million bucks. Show him how to work. Slow down the pace. Um, really understand psychology. You know, that's what show does best. And uh, even, the, you know, and yeah, he might be the king of the jo jabronis, but, uh, you know, Big Show knows how to work, and that's why they put him in the, this match. You know, and he's he a, We call him a jabron, but he's a several-time world champion. He pinned Hulk Hogan clean on more than one occasion. Yeah. You know, well, he has a very... <laughs> Who the hell has done that? No, but I mean, look, look, show is a great talent. I think he's entertaining. He's so entertaining. And, you know, don't mistake our smarkiness, our snarkiness for, for disrespect. I mean, please, we, we respect the, the wrestlers. We respect the performers. And um, I, I dig show and I really do. Um, but of course, a lot of what we say is very entertainment based. So, you know, who knows if we're being the truth, who, if we're being truthful or not. Maybe. I mean, maybe. Maybe we're not. Maybe we're just playing characters on a podcast. No, um, that's impossible. Kayfabe, it's still real to me. Damn it. <laughs> we're still keeping Kayfabe on the show. Um, look, you know, we know where the trajectory of Roman Reigns is going. So yeah. Big Show is once again, he's the roadblock for the baby face. You know, that's the same simple as that. Last well, man standing, I think that it will be Reigns and uh Unfortunately, with a PG era show, how much blood are we going to see on this pay per view? Because it is on the network; it's not on network TV. Do you think they're going to show a little bit more violence, a little bit more blood? I think there'll be there may be some accidental blood in the chain match or the cage match, but I don't think they'll plan it. But I do think some of these guys will go stiff enough to cause blood. Obviously, they're using weapons. When you have a cage, you Use the cage as a weapon, uh, and when you have a you know a chain, you'll have to use the chain as a weapon, worked or whatever it is, and so it'll be a little bit more violent maybe than usual. Um, but they they don't really they have an interesting card set up. I, I don't know how I feel about it. 
to me, it could really bomb. So they might <laughs> they might want to get a little more violent. It's it's kind of crazy. They do have a lot of great talent on this card, and they're paired off with one on one matches. Um, on paper, it looks really good. Actually, mm-hmm. for me, I mean, this match looks good. I'm interested in this one, the Chicago Street Fight. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. uh, Extreme Rules. Um, once again, head to head with Luke Harper in a Chicago Street Fight. Um, at the end of the day, the question is. Uh, who will win, but how much of the Windy City will still be left standing when they are through? Uh, funny thing about it is I am in the Windy City, right. and I will be going back to Nashville during the time that this pay-per-view is going on. Mm-hmm. Ironic, right? Very um, ironic. You know, um, who do you think goes over on this match? Luke Harper or Ambrose? Ambrose. Uh, Ambrose goes over, and, and, and they will have one of the best matches on the card. And this, if this match is really good, and then the Rollins match I expect to be good, and the Cena match I expect to be good, and if Reigns can pull out a good match, then it'll be a good pay per view. Because if you have four pretty good matches, you have a good pay per view. You know that's kind of the pay per view rule, unless you have three killer killer matches. But I do think if they give them a lot of time, and by God, they really should. You know. Um, considering all the things that have happened, I think with the lack of Brian, it might force the road agents and Booker's hands a little bit to get a little bit more uh, with it, you know, because they don't, they have network momentum. They don't want to blow it by having a really bad pay-per-view. So I, anyway, I think they'll let these guys go. And I think Luke Harper will really, really show us, um, really show us some really cool stuff. And I, I probably would expect Ambrose to have some sort of new, newish, uh, finisher because you know Rollins is using a version of a double arm DDT kind of like he does so that I was kind of curious about that too where does that leave Ambrose and his finisher hmm. but yeah, um, yeah I, I think they'll have a great match and I think Ambrose wins clean interesting uh, I agree too I think Am- Ambrose is going to go over um, how about this diva 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 we got uh, Nikki versus Naomi uh, for the Divas Championship. Um, I still contend that uh, Naomi is still faced because because Paige is out of action for whatever reason. Do you still know what's going on with that other than the fact that it was supposed to be someone else? or The storyline they had was that AJ would turn heel on Paige, so they don't know what to do with Paige because her storyline partner is gone, so they don't have anything for Paige to do. They couldn't put Paige in AJ's spot, so they picked someone else. They picked Naomi because she was going to turn heel anyway um, in a different angle, feud, whatever. So I think that means by proxy that Naomi wins the belt as a heel and could then possibly feud with Paige after that. Yeah, and you know the thing thing that's interesting to me is that once again, injuries cascade and ruin plans for WWE. The yes. Usos having, you know, the the issue with WrestleMania. Now, you know, they can't be on TV. Screwed up the tag team. Screwed up the angle for Naomi versus Natalia. Right. Screw, and AJ leaving screwed up the Divas thing. And yep. now you've got the other problem with Daniel Bryan. I mean, it's right. this cascading failure after failure after failure because they they didn't have those people waiting in the wings and the writers are not able to to think you know on the fly in order to make sure and this is their solution um yeah so yeah naomi she's gonna finally she's gonna get her divas title well naomi was naomi was getting a push anyway with the turn so they said well let's just push her in this thing so i fully expect her to win and probably about another nine and a half minute match that was probably that'll probably be similar to what we saw in raw with her sister um in it a uh, uh, bella's sister brie bella's whatever yeah that was basically a test run for the paper. that was a te- that was a test run for the match i just kind of realized that too so they usually yeah. give them nine or ten minutes at the pay-per-view and they make sure to do that now ever since that damn tweet AJ yep. said a few months back, but <coughs> it'll probably be a pretty decent match, and I bet It'll Naomi be will probably give it her all, you know, being yeah. finally having a good opportunity. And actually right now the Divas is a little bit better than it's been for a while, so this mm-hmm. is a good opportunity for her. I expect her to bring it, and, um, you know, the Bellas will be faces, and 
go a different direction. Oh, we'll see. We'll see what happens there, but I agree. Naomi, good luck to you, girl. Good luck. We got the U.S. champion, John Cena, the champ is here, versus Rusev in the Russian chain match uh, from Walmart. So uh, what do you think is going to happen here? The match would be better if it were live from Walmart. I, I We need another Walmart, uh, kind of like a Stone Cold the Booker T match. We need or, or you know, showdown in the grocery store. We actually need an on-set battle for Walmart. And the grocery, the, the grocery store match was funny because Booker T turns and sees him, and the Chris like, I wonder what he's doing in the grocery store with me. Dude, <laughs> it's, it's the like, best. It's it to me. It's one of Booker T's shining moments, and I think why you know, is he you, in the grocery store? Yeah. Is he just, maybe he's just shopping. Yeah, I know, right? And then here he comes. I mean, the, no, the supermarket not. brawl. The supermarket brawl is probably one of my favorite uh, raw moments, but. Uh, but uh, and I think it's high time that WWE does another really nice supermarket brawl over at a Walmart with a Russian chain. But uh, and, and uh, so so what do you think? Uh, Rusev this takes the, the belt. This is the type of match where Rusev can win without Cena getting pinned. So it'd be a good opportunity to put the belt back on Rusev. If Rusev wins, they have to continue the feud. If Cena wins, they can end the feud. But where does that leave Rusev? We know where it leaves Cena, pretty much where he already is. And I, I have a feeling Rusev won't win the title. Uh, I've heard that Vince loves the Lana character and has big plans for her. So he may be planning on um, making her the GM of something or something like that. But, um, you know, if I were booking, I would have Rusev win uh, his title back in a bloody brawl. But we probably won't see any blood. We won't see anybody's eardrum get burst open. <laughs> we won't see any swords come out. And I, I'm wondering, they've been wrestling a while now. They've they've been going at it for a few months. So uh, this is the third 20 minute whatever pay per view match now. Straight. Yeah, they've been battling each other in house shows and things like that. So yeah, you know, hey, it'll be a good match. I'll tell you that. They, well, Rusev Rusev is learning from the master. You know, so John Cena is the the you king. Got yeah, yeah. He's learning well, from Arn Anderson, you mean? Yeah, that. Back? He is learning from Arn Anderson in the back. Yeah, I don't know how much knowledge Arn is, is bestowing on them, being their agent. but uh, I was going to make a crash uh, beer drinking joke, but I won't do that. Because I know he got up. I know Arn Anderson got upset when Kevin Nash did that. Oh, <laughs> about the, about sharing stories? <laughs> well, yeah, the, never mind. That's Arn Anderson's a class act. He... Um, He's uh, a. <laughs> I have an Arn Anderson story I read in a book that um that I will not. <laughs> Should I reveal that story? Go ahead. No, I can't. Okay, so it's uh, it's so uh, so I can't do it. I can't do it. It's awful. So uh, your pick is for Rusev to regain the belt in order to prolong the feud. Yes. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Um, I think I think Cena's going to retain, unfortunately. I think so. Probably. I think he's going to retain, and uh, Rusev is going to be uh, – he's going to have to go back to Russia to repackage himself and figure out what the next step is going to be. I don't know game. if they can afford to take Rusev off the show right now. They but can't, okay. They can't. They can't. But what, what are you going to do? I mean, what does he do? He has to start back over and maybe go after the IC title now? I mean – the whole Russian gimmick, I mean, that was a WrestleMania type of gimmick. And now that it's being prolonged into this, this is going to be the blow off. Um, okay, fine. Um, what do you do from there, big Russian? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, once again, they've booked themselves in the corner with his character. <laughs> what do you do? You know, it might continue the feud. Yeah, well. <laughs> so well, well, okay. Next month well, again. The only the only thing that I can think of then, if they continue to do that, is you know John has to have the title. I think uh, for for them to continue, believe it or not, he uh, Rusev is not. They're not going to play hot potato with the belt. I think if anything, it's going to you know it's a Russian chain match. It is extreme rules. How do you get yourself DQ'd for that in a Russian chain match? Mm -hmm. The the guy's going to have to pass out. Just like he did with the chain around his face, and he's gonna have to—he's gonna have to—he's not gonna 
submit, but he's not going to give up. He's not going to give up. He's right. going to, the match is not going to be able to continue because he puts him in to the camel clutch and or the accolade and so be it. Right. Yeah. It's going to be a Steve Austin moment is what's going to happen. Well, they need blood for that, but yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's I not going to be a turn, exactly. but I know exactly what you're saying. I, I believe, I believe it's going to be a point where, you know, John Cena is going to be tested and, and I think he's going to retain the belt. You know, okay. how do you get out of that? But that's, that's what I say. So, uh, last but not least, RKO out of nowhere is being banned for this match. It is a cage match with Seth Rollins and the Viper. So, what happens here? Uh, Rollins wins. Uh, Kane, Kane turns. Is, yeah, Kane, Kane is supposed to be the uh, gatekeeper for this match, apparently. Yes, the gatekeeper of the cage, which really negates the <laughs> what the cage really is. Which is, it keeps everyone out. You know, they did cage matches for years in territories to keep the heels out. Mm -hmm. And here we have a heel at the door. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to me, this is like a ridiculous bit of booking where they want me to believe Kane's going to be a good guy. And this is all, they've done it very good, but, you know, I'm no damn fool. And I think Kane costs. You know, or in the match, and Rollins wins. And um, <clears throat> I think they'll give him another month with the belt, and then they'll see. Well, once again, they did say it. Kane always does what's best for business. And what's always. Best for, what's best for Kane is going to be abiding by the authority, by putting a little bit of doubt. And uh, it, it'll make Randy look amazing. At the end of the day, um, Randy is going to have something else to fight for, and he's going to live to fight another day, but not without being screwed out of his championship opportunity. So now, once again, we're going to see Seth Rollins, I believe, is going to retain, you know, and the screw job in full effect. So hopefully they'll have another great match. Their WrestleMania match was great, if, and they were put on second, so they could really stretch out themselves a little bit more with this one. And uh, I think this will be the best match of the card. So this could be killer. Rusev, Cena, we kind of know what we're going to get with that. Uh, Ambrose, Harper, if they give a lot of time, could be awesome. Maybe Naomi comes out with a really killer match and surprises us. And uh, maybe Reigns pulls out a good match, and it could end up being a killer card if that all happens. Absolutely. Well, that pretty much wraps up our Extreme Rules roundup, as well as a little bit of wrestle talk in regards to SmackDown and Raw. We are very WWE heavy. We promise we're going to get to Ring of Honor, New Japan, Lucha Underground Absolutely. as the, uh, the the Lucha Underground season's wrapping up, as well as TNA and Impact Wrestling news in our next episode. Well, probably in two episodes, because we will be doing an Extreme Rules post-show. Uh, we're going to try to have a panel of guests, much like our WrestleMania show, just to spice it up just yeah. a little bit. Um, so, uh, if you have anything you'd like to add, feel free to hit us up on social media, P wrestling cast on Twitter, pro wrestling cast on Facebook, as well as our YouTube page. You uh, hit us up on that. We do appreciate it. And once again, thank you so much to Fox home video for helping us out. Not, uh, on our yeah, YouTube thank page. You. So thank, thank you for that. We're just trying to promote the Marine Four. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, um, don't don't go see the Marine Four, everybody. <laughs> oh wait, it's not in the theater anyway. Uh, but but do subscribe to the WWE Network. We appreciate Please. it. Do like and subscribe this show. Support our links on Amazon as well as HighSpots.com, and hopefully we'll have the guys from High Spots here on a show really soon. So uh, Stephen, anything else you'd like to add before we get out of here? I just wanted to say our promo of the week is, uh, like we were saying at the beginning, is tremendous. Um, there had been a, you know, title. Ric Flair had, had his initial title run real quickly in 1981, beating Dusty Rhodes. He lost it in St. Louis to Harley Race. And what I, from, there's, it's, there's not much televised footage of it. Uh, from what I understand, it was a killer match. And um, <clears throat> basically, Flair chases Race all around the territories. And, um, you know, wants, Flair wants the title belt back. And they were building up to the first Starcade, which was predated WrestleMania. Uh, it was called a Flair for the Gold, a tremendous uh, pay-per-view. It was Harley Race versus Brig Flair. They had to set it all up with an injury angle. And in order to have an injury, in, in order to have the injury angle and all of that, and um, they had to 
started somewhere and it's basically Harley Race saying, hey, listen, I'm tired of this guy. Tell you what, I'll give you $25,000 if you get rid of this guy for me. Here, look. <laughs> and he shows the briefcase with the money and he's, 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 he's amazing. He's so good. God, he's so good. And he's so good. And, 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 and the interview was a success. The, uh, he was later turned on by Bob Orton, his, his, or Flair was by his partner. He, he was in a neck brace. They interviewed him, and he, and he made the most incredible comeback I've ever seen with a baseball bat attacking all three heels. That would be another promo of the week, maybe sometime in the future with Flair's big comeback from all this. But this is the promo that set it all up. This is the promo. <laughs> it's crazy, too, going into Starcade because the announcing was just so good. Mm -hmm. uh, it was i didn't like that it was just yeah. crazy uh starcade the first the first starcade is amazing and it's something you can see on the wwe network it is something to see for sure uh, definitely check that out out there i mean it's it's well worth it it's got a great undercard um jay and plus Jack. dream hey plus the dreams on it so the dream comes out at the end um you know the uh jay youngblood steamboat have a great match uh, of course yeah, the great match, match. Wahoo's that, 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 on there somewhere. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, Young Blood, um, Steamboat. What a great little tag team that was, and it, it's so funny to see them uh, so young, so young. Yeah, and 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 you know, sad uh, with uh, Jay Young Blood passing away before, uh, I think before even the age of thirty. But that yeah. was a great tag team. But you know, Steamboat went on to bigger and better things. But this was his big pay per view de debut, and he didn't let anybody down. He was. Oh. Great pay per view. Starcade nineteen eighty three, a flair for the gold, the first pay per view, really. Yeah, amazing stuff. Thank you so much for that historical roundup. Mm. And once again, Harley Race put out a hit with a twenty five thousand dollars and the NWA World Heavyweight Championship right there in the suitcase, uh, just flinging money around like it was nothing. <laughs> so uh, good stuff there. Thank you so much for tuning in to Pro Wrestling Cast. We'll see you for the Extreme Rules post show this coming Sunday. We wish you all a great week. On behalf of Stephen Anthony, the heel commentator, I'm Al John Go. Have a great one. We'll see you next time. Oh, don't forget to tuck your head. Don't forget. Nick and Nick Bonquickle in this episode. For life. Promo of the week. I didn't think that there was anything on the face of the earth that would ever push me to do what I'm going to do right now. But Flair, you have pushed me as far as you're going to push. Right here is $25,000. And it goes to any human being that can eliminate Ric Flair from wrestling. Take a look at it, Paul Jones, you and your whole entourage of people, Dick Slater, Kabuki, the names, the list, it goes on and on. Any human being that can eliminate Ric Flair for me has got $25,000 cash. I'll give it to any living human being. Jack Briscoe, you are world's champion. You took the belt from me. You're the man. You can do it. It's here for you. Come and get it, please. Somebody take the damn money. I want rid of Flair. Thanks for checking out Pro Wrestling Cast. If you've got a question or comment, leave us a voicemail at 615-9339-PWC. That's 615-9339-792. Follow us on Facebook at Pro Wrestling Cast and on Twitter at P Wrestling Cast. Or email us at Pro Wrestling Cast at gmail.com. It's still real to me, damn it! The opinions and ideas presented in these podcasts are those of Pro Wrestling Cast and are for entertainment purposes. You're awesome. Thank you so much, Mr. Funk, for saying what needed to be said. Yeah, yeah, yeah.